Hello, Kent County. I'm Dr. Adam London, Director of the Kent County Health Department. It's March 22nd. I'd like to give you a little bit of an update on COVID-19. We learned just a little bit ago that the total case count here in the state of Michigan has increased to 1,035 cases. Unfortunately, there's another death statewide bringing that total to eight. Here in Kent County, we learned of two additional cases, bringing our Kent County uh, case load to 22. And we still have the one death that we notified you of last night. Our CD and EPI team is working to, uh, to identify those two cases, to make sure that they are isolated, that they're doing well, and also to make sure that any close contacts that they had are in quarantine for the next 14 days. So we'll keep you posted as changes to the case count continue to, uh, to change. And of course, a reminder that the actual testing and the number of positive cases that we know about not really very indicative of the actual reality, okay? We know there are far more cases out there, but the testing is so limited that we're stuck with, uh, with these, this very limited information. We're getting lots of questions about what does it mean to bend the curve and what are the strategies in place in order to win this war against COVID-19. I want to walk through the, the chart that is often used to describe this scenario. And right now, we're here. We have the number of cases uh, on this axis, time across the bottom. We're here. For the past several weeks, across the country and here in Michigan, we've been seeing relatively small numbers of cases. And then in the past week or so, those cases have started to grow exponentially. Now, if we were to do nothing, if we were to let this outbreak burn, like outbreaks sometimes do with, with no mitigation measures in place, we would see an epidemic curve that would look like this. It would grow exponentially fast, it would affect lots of people in relatively short time, and it would cause massive suffering all at once. There are some people that say, well, why don't we just do that? Why don't we just pull the Band-Aid off and, and, and suffer for a short time and get this over with? The problem is if we were to do that, we would maximize the suffering and the death associated with this. And that's because of this blue line. This broken blue line symbolizes the capacity of hospitals and medicine uh, and pharmaceuticals to provide care for people who are sick. Under the scenario of an unmitigated uh, epidemic, we would blow past that capacity very quickly. And essentially all of these people in surplus of that line would be at severe risk of, of suffering and death. So what we are trying to do through all these mitigation strategies from the executive orders, through the public health orders, through the recommendations of washing your hands and staying home if you're sick and avoiding gatherings is to bend the curve. That's what we've been talking about for some time now. What that looks like is trying to change this curve into a curve that looks more like this. It's down below the blue line and not surpassing the ability of our uh, hospital systems to provide care. And so while this might take longer, uh, the reality is, is that's going to uh, save as many lives as possible. All right. Now we're also hoping that the blue line increases and that's going to be done by more ventilators by more hospital beds, by better technologies, and hopefully, as represented by this increase here, by the availability of antiviral therapies that can be used to treat people who are sick in order to mitigate the severity of their symptoms. Ultimately, what we need is the vaccine. That's probably a year and a half out. So we've got some time between now and then. A concern that we all have is if we maintain the status quo with all of our businesses closed, our schools closed, uh, with the economy uh, basically stalled, we're gonna create massive economic suffering and perhaps create human suffering and disease and illness. Uh, that's even worse than the outbreak. So we, we've gotta find a balance. And that's gonna be the challenge during this period of time, is how do we keep this epidemic curve line beneath within the capacity of hospitals to provide care, uh, but also 
doing that without stalling the economy and creating massive suffering because of that. So there's going to be a dance here for a while. I expect that once we see that our interventions are having a positive effect on this epidemic curve, that we're going to be able to release uh, and relax some of these restrictions a little bit, hopefully allowing oxygen back into the economy. And um, it might be this, uh, this series of relaxations and, and, and more restrictions of changes to uh, executive orders or other public health orders for a while in order to make sure uh, that we're uh, neither surpassing the, uh, the capacity of our health care systems uh, or completely uh, stalling the economy and creating massive suffering that way. So it's going to be a challenge for a while. Uh, but ultimately, there's four things that we have to do in order to win this war against COVID-19. Number one, we've got to bend the curve. And, and that's up to all of us right now in this moment to bend the curve by following those public health recommendations of avoiding mass gatherings. Number two, we have to continue to increase the ability, the capacity, the technology of the healthcare system and medicine to provide care for people who are sick. Number three, we're going to have to do this dance to stay below this line for some period of time by adjusting our policies. And number four, vaccine. Ultimately, we need to develop the vaccine and we need to distribute it to everyone. By doing that, we can turn COVID-19 uh, into so many other diseases that we manage effectively through vaccine. Uh, that's our long-term strategy, and hopefully we can make it just one more vaccine-preventable disease that does not cause massive suffering. I'm Dr. Adam London with Kent County Health Department. Please continue to like and to share this Facebook posting and, and all of the Facebook postings that we, that we place. I will be back tomorrow with uh, more information about COVID-19. Thank you.